dungeon crawlers. We would be honored if you would join us. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Dungeon Crawlers, where, guess what? We don't have to say Batu anymore, because Alton's back! That's Bless right. you! I don't have to continue to sound like I'm sneezing. And yes, he has a dark saber. Yes, it's annoying. He has one. Oh. Has one. But hey, I can still do this. <laughs> it's it's true. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, man. Like, don't get too far ahead of me, okay? I'm trying to so, give I away still, all my secrets. I still have all of my lightsabers, so that's all that matters. Um <laughs> So Dan is the general grievous of the team. <laughs> yes, I have way too many. Hello I guess, there. I guess I don't <laughs> have way too many. I just have a collection. So either I'm a really good Sith Lord and I just devastated the Jedi population and start picking up collections, or I have a problem. Revan? Dan Vader. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was Revan for the longest time on the show. Right. So, but um, yes. So there's some really cool news. Uh, you know, we haven't done a news episode in a long time. There's a lot of really cool news that's been coming out. So uh, we definitely want to talk about that. Uh, so I'm not really, I don't got anything at super witty or anything like that for the intro. So we'll just kind of dive in. Um, so there's several reboots that, that are happening. Uh, you know, we got the Willy Wonka re- reboot. We have He-Man being rebooted to Netflix uh which i'm excited about because there's some really amazing casting there i hear the power is under reboot which you know i i loved the first movie uh i've been a highlander fan for a long time and you have to admit it had an amazing soundtrack it really did um and And to be honest when it dropped in the 80s it was it was it was a one of a kind like yeah. I had never seen anything like it before. No, nope. the, the, and, and that's something I feel that is really lacking in cinema, uh, original IPs. Um, so we have that. Uh, we have a lot of Marvel stuff we can talk about. We have some DC and some other things, some video games. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, we, can, we can talk about all those things. Well, that's the show, everyone. Yes, yeah, we're you. done. We're out <laughs> here. That was the fastest show you've ever heard. Hey. <laughs> I mean, let's take it almost from the top there, though. I, I don't, unless, Krebs, you have anything particular to say about the Willy Wonka reboot? I think it's more well, one of those things that we're just going to wait and see, but well, what are your it, thoughts? it's kind of interesting who they have possibly casted as Yes. Um, so, you know, the original movie had Gene Wilder, uh, fantastic actor. I think he did a fantastic job. But it's interesting that it sounds, from what I've read that tom holland spider-man himself is who they're casting as willy wonka i don't know about that it's Uh, not tom holland it's not hmm? tom holland oh it's not it's it's uh timothy chalamet okay well this is an older article then that i've yeah that's fair timothy chalamet okay he's full on he he was his dad is french and he speaks beautiful French himself, but he's also like full English speaking. Like you'd never know that, except for his name, that he's French. So Timothy Chalamet, actually it's, it's Timote, but that's okay. He hates okay. when people Because this article it. says it's, no, nah, I found another one. It says it's either Tom Holland or him. So I could believe it going either way. And, and what's okay, interesting- so is, he's the guy that's, he's the guy that's playing the, the main uh, character in Dune. Yeah, he's Paul Atreides in the new Dune. Okay, okay. He's, he's going to be the reboot master. But the thing about this movie is that it's, it's not- entirely a reboot it's a prequel it is an origin story for willie uh, yeah i wow. thought it was a reboot there also there's there's the duality of response right there dan <laughs> just immediately like yaks his innards onto the desk meanwhile i'm like ooh, ooh i know ooh. right and I mean, i'm over here be, just licking the snozberries i mean to uh, be fair though i i know that i i know that the same type of reaction i would elicit from krebs when i mentioned the cruella film that's coming out this I'm week. actually excited about that. I'm excited for it. I have Krebs, hopes for it. 
So I do. I have hopes for it. I don't hate it. I have hopes for it. They, well, what I hate is Disney freaking revisiting every single one of their animated IPs yeah. to rebuild it in IRL. Yeah. And instead of now, this though is an origin story that we haven't seen, Cruella. It's an origin story that we haven't seen. So I, I give Disney some space for that one. And, well, plus, and not only that, they've casted it a wonderful actress to oh, play. Oh, Emma Stone's Emma amazing. Stone. Yeah, I and, think she'll do a beautiful and job with it. Don't forget, Glenn Close is a co director and a producer and she's apparently been on the project from the beginning and yes. we know that her delivery in the 1998 101 dalmatians was excellent i think she did a great two job of those actresses together creating the cruella yeah. mythos i'm like i, mean, I think it, it, it's good um but you know it is a little bit different but you're right it's it's pretty much the same thing just revisited it's like let's get something new um yeah but a prequel of Willy Wonka. Who who really wants to see a prequel? I mean, well, I'm I'm reserving judgment on this one, and it's because Timothy Chalamet, ever since he's ever since he hit the silver screen, has done nothing but amazing work. He is incredible. He's a he's a massively talented actor, and he well, brings so yeah. much to the work. Fair so enough. But if they've got him, I suspect they've got something. They've got they've they've got the potential for something special. You're right. They have the potential, but you know, we all know that there are many films out there where it's they've gotten really talented people and big names, and then it's just a massive horrible yep. flop. I mean, Mars Attacks. Let's look at that one. That one was Mars Attacks oh. is a very special case I mean, because it was a very self-aware meta film that knew exactly what it was. I mean, that, so, it's right up there with Sharknado. Sharknado knew yeah. exactly what it was doing. You're right, but we, we have those where they have talented actors, but it's still garbage. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is sometimes there can only be one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there can only be one. And they, so should, tell, not, they should not do reboots. So, however, so tell me more about the Highlander reboot. However, the Highlander reboot, I think, should get that. Um, for for a couple reasons, you know, uh, and really it, it boils down to uh, uh, there's a couple things that are, are going to sadden me about the reboot. One, no Sean Connery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, deep fakes and all that, but I agree with you. Yeah. I think Sean Connery's out of this one. Yeah, you know, there's just no way he's in that. You know, he's already passed away and everything. Uh, I won't have to listen to Christopher Lambert's horrible Scottish accent. Because it's not Scottish. <laughs> because it's not. It's, it's not, not Scottish. Belgian yeah. accent. I, whatever I, the crap I, it is. Yeah, I feel very confident that, you know, Henry Calville can actually deliver a good Scottish accent for me. Um, and I don't, but at the same time, I don't know if he can pull off the character. I mean, so I do have some concerns, but but I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. Um, it it is a, you know, I love the TV series. I did love the first film. The second film was wow, what the crap are you trying to do? But hey, Sean Connery's still in it, so you know, as long as you watch the director's cut, it makes more sense. The third movie with Mario Van Peoples was just garbage, and don't <laughs> yeah beyond we keep going beyond that, and then it just gets worse. I mean, but in the year, in the past few years, the CGI technology for mustaches has gotten, or moving mustaches has gotten so much better. Yeah. So this <laughs> film really could have quite a leg to stand on. But, you know, but Connor McCloud doesn't have a mustache or a beard for that matter. He just has very long hair and a wife named Heather. Uh <laughs> <laughs> now the thing with Henry with Henry Cavill and all this is you know right now he's writing the height of his fame right like yeah. he and 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 I do view him as a strong actor no pun intended if you've seen his muscles yeah. uh he he loves his craft he sacrifices for it he's a legit actor that said there is a little part of me that's being cautiously optimistic here I uh, mm. on the on the one hand uh stunt work practical effects and visual effects in that order uh from least to greatest in my opinion have all increased in quality over the years oh yeah the quickening so, should look amazing now the, well the the beheading and and the thing that i'm really looking forward to is the fight choreography and the stunt work because we have come 
just country miles since the 80s when it comes to physical stunt work. That said, uh, I there's part of me that wonders if if Mr. Cavill was offered this role because he did such a great job with The Witcher. They're like, oh yeah, that guy over there, he's got swords and he's really good with them. Let's go get that guy and we'll do like really sharp looking stuff, right? They just they're like, yeah, let's get Henry because he's famous, he's good looking, and oh, he can wield a sword. Please tell me they didn't bring in Christopher Walken for Ramirez's character. Uh, <laughs> that, which you gotta, is, you gotta you know, protect would, your head. Yeah, you know that that is Sean Connery's character. That would be horrible. We Oof. should, we should, instead of dream casting, we should do nightmare cast. Like what's the worst possible combination that we could get from this movie? <laughs> turn, turn from a great film into yeah. perfect camp. Well, this is, yeah, I know, I mean, right? This, I, this is the weird thing about the film is you have uh, Christopher Lambert playing a Scottish guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the accent isn't great. It's not. Um, what is he Belgian? I don't even know what he's. I had to look it up. Apparently, he's Swiss. Okay, he's Swiss. Um, you know, and then you have Sean Connery in his <laughs> he's actually Scottish in his Scottish brogue, where he's a Spaniard. Where's the Spaniard <laughs> that married a Japanese woman and was given a samurai sword? <laughs> and he's called a Spanish peacock, you know, and, and but he has this, uh, it's just like, where are we going with all of this? I mean, at least if we had some consistency, uh, that that would be nice. Um, but I get it. They wanted the star power with Sean Connery. Um, in fact, Christopher Lambert had just come off of doing Tarzan, and I was reading this article to find out what his accent was, you know, what the origin was, and they made mention that when he was cast in Highlander, he still had a very limited English vernacular. He still didn't know very much English. Gotcha. In Tarzan, he just had to do, like, grunts and, and stuff. Yeah. He didn't really have to do much, so he was fine. But in Highlander, he had to learn a lot more English. Yeah. Interesting. So... Uh, because we are doing kind of lightning round tonight, I'm going to yes, make a nice, sweet, slick little transition that nobody will ever catch on to. Oh, no, never. Talking about another item from the 80s that is seeing a reboot. The one with the power. The hey, power man. Of Grace he oh, man. my gosh. So I, I'm excited. So I've always I've been a huge He-Man fan uh, since I was a kid. I had mm -hmm. the, the action figures. Well, um, when the 2002 Cartoon Network reboot came, I was super excited about that. And I loved how they delved more into uh, the He-Man mythos where you actually find out that Skeletor is He-Man's uncle, um, Keldor and stuff like that, the tie-in with Hordak and that. Um, so the new Masters of the Universe Revelations, that's what it's called, coming to Netflix uh, July 23rd, has an amazing cast. You know, since I found out about this, I've been like stoked um you know sarah michelle geller is playing is doing the voice of tila oh wow lena headley is evil lynn alicia silverstone is marlena which is he uh prince adam's mom roboto is being voiced by justin long <laughs> chris wood chris wood is doing the voice of he-man and prince adam uh you know he he played uh oh the daxamite superhero and supergirl i can't anyway can't remember is who it is um liam cunningham is playing matt is doing the voice of man at arms well that's gonna be so good that is an amazing voice uh now this is the only one that i'm a little off on which that is Diedrich bader is doing the voice of king randor um so it's kind of like really i don't know about that um so for those of us who are not deeply enfranchised in all of this it sounds like this is going to be an animated series on netflix and not trying yes. to go live action yeah it's definitely it's animated uh merman this is a very interesting uh voice casting and i wonder how that's gonna work out but kevin conroy the voice oh of batman my gosh in my opinion is kevin merman. conroy <laughs> yeah which is very interesting because the you know the big one, the really big one that attracted me is, uh, so we have Alan Oppenheimer is doing Mossman. Now, Alan did, was the original guy to do the voice of Skeletor. Um, so Mossman is kind of is a, a newer character that they're, they're bringing in, um, and he's doing the voice for that. Uh, you know, 
in the comics he's not new but as far as the, the cartoon but mark hamill the joker is playing is doing the voice of skeletor oh that's so good so it's kind of interesting we got kevin conroy and mark hamill playing you know working together again playing opposite each other again yeah, but they've got an amazing cast for this cartoon series um i mean we can keep going w- with the people here and so it's just like it's they definitely aren't going cheap um uh, and mm. i feel like they're they're definitely digging in and not only that the animators are the same animators that uh, are been doing the Castlevania series, so we know the art's going to be. Great. Mm, it's I'm not going to be like the, the Shira art uh, hmm. series. You said this was going to be coming out middle of July, end of July, July twenty third, July twenty third, end of July. Yeah. So, a uh, quick question before I move on from He Man, Krebs, on a scale of zero to Dan, where are you on the He Man scale? I am probably a uh, a twitchy Justin Long. I think uh, I, 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 uh, I am excited for this. I think they've got an amazing cast. Netflix has been producing uh, nostalgia-based series in very uh, well-done uh, reissues, which I think is very, very cool. They're revisiting a lot of my childhood. I, I wonder how long it will take for them to revisit G.I. Joe or to revisit Thundercats again, you know, something to that effect. But mm. uh, but as far as for He-Man, I, I am excited to give this show a real shot, hoping that it doesn't, you know, hoping that they take it the right direction in terms of seriousness um, and, and that they avoid being campy, you know? Oh, so, I, I'm, I'm getting so much more excited. Okay, sorry. So Dietrich Bader is also doing Trap Job, but not only that, sorry. Um, Phil Lamar is do, doing the voice of Hero. Uh, Jason Muse is de- doing Stinkor. So, I mean, you know, Silent How do Bob. I know that name? How do I know that name? He, Silent he, Bob? Silent Bob's partner. Oh, that's fantastic. And Stinkor Jay. is this Jay. giant skunk-like guy that just stinks all the time. Yeah, so Jay of Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, Jay. Uh, Griffin Newman which uh, he did Arthur in the, the uh, live t- uh, tick series is doing Orco. Oh my gosh. Uh, Henry, he, he'll Rollins. make a great Orco. Yeah. Henry Rollins is doing. Uh, Henry Tri- Rollins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it just keeps going. I'm just like, Holy crap. Okay. okay. I'm just getting I'm, more and more excited because of this cast. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay on the Justin Long. I'm, I'm going to modify it to the Justin Long scale, but I'm going to go with Galaxy Quest, Justin Long. I'm getting really excited for this now. Yeah. So in a, in a, in our ongoing unsurprising segment of Alton needs to watch things. Uh-huh, yes. I'm, I'm sure that there will be an episode that comes out at the end of July in which hopefully the three of us will have sat down and actually physically watched it together. But if not, we'll at least have watched it separately and, and then come and do it. And there together. is a character in, in the series called scare glow. What? And he is voiced by Tony Todd. What's a Tony Todd. So Tony Todd is the guy that, uh, uh, did Candyman. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah, he that, has a beautiful voice, voice and everything. Yes. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I'm just I'm just waiting for like Lance Riddick to join the class to join the cast, man. <laughs> you never know. I mean, there's never still, know. There's, there's King Hiss and all of his guys, and there's Hordak and the Horde and blah. Uh. That was the one thing that was very disappointing about the 2002 reboot. They did a great job, and then it just kind of fizzled out in season three where. You see, they were building up to the Hordak thing and everything, and they just weren't able to follow through because it got canceled. So, hopefully, yeah. this does. Well. I I have hopes for it. I really do, because they're also releasing a toy line with with the. Oh, this movie, so. Of course, they are. Yeah, so yeah, I may end up buying a few because Dan's got to buy something. <laughs> I I gotta have some He Man. Yeah. I can dig it. Yep. I can dig it. Yep. All right. So. So we can try, we that. can move into you know some of the trailers and exciting movies that are coming out. Yeah, there's lots of Marvel news going on right yes. now. There's so much. Um, in fact, and this is a point that maybe we ought to address after we talk about the list of things that we have here. But 
some of the feelings starting to circulate the internet is maybe there's a little bit of fatigue. Um, the uh, the three big ones that we have on the list tonight are the Eternals, uh-huh. Loki, and Black Widow. Yes. Dan, give us your thoughts. Start where you wish. Well, I mean, to be fair, some of these movies weren't also. I mean, these movies weren't all supposed to come out and TV show right and like they are mm-hmm. and there was supposed to, you know the, the year of 2020 had you know has thrown things off uh things definitely got delayed so in case know. any of you are just tuning in 2020 was a weird year yes yeah i yes. don't know if you saw that but yeah a lot of things happened in 2020 mm-hmm. including yeah, yeah. We'll just leave it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Black Widow was supposed to come out. Uh, Free Guy, you know, was supposed. Oh to my come gosh, out. I'm so looking yeah, forward to Free I've Guy. I'm waiting for that. I want to see this movie, but they keep, but it just keeps getting pushed off. You know, uh, the Fast and the Furious movie that's coming out this year was supposed to come out last year. There's just a lot yeah. of things that got shuffled around. Um, so Black Widow is one of those. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually excited about it, but at the same yes. time, a little confused where this movie fits in the timeline because we technically know what happens to black widow and so it's really interesting that this movie is coming out after that event in uh the infinity War. yeah but that's not where it happens in the timeline i think it happens after the fight with ultron it's between I'm ultron sure, and well i think it probably more infinity than likely Gauntlet. happens after civil war um but yeah. still it's interesting they're putting it out now instead of mm-hmm. before, but I'm I mean, a, I, I am excited. I think they have a great cast. You know, Rachel Weiss, you can't go wrong with. You really can't. Um, and I can't remember the actor's name. David Harbor. Yes, David Harbor. Fantastic. I, if anything that I enjoy out of Stranger Things, it's his character. Oh my gosh, he's uh, amazing. Yeah, it's okay. So I'm, go ahead. Black Widow is one that I am very excited for. I've been waiting for it for quite a while. And in fact, one of the reasons that I am excited for it is also one of the reasons that I was excited for Rogue One, which is that because we know the inevitable outcome of the character, I'm hoping that they lean into turning it into a tragedy of setting her character up and then pushing over the first domino so that we can watch as everything plays out. in the. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to do that. I got to hope. Um, I got to hope. Because she shows up in the white costume, and that's actually setting her up as a more powerful Black Widow character. Um, You can have power and lose it. Yeah, I know. But, (laughs) and and, and this is the other thing that really annoys me um, Hmm. is we have Scarlett Johansson, the Black Widow. Every cartoon or anything, she's had a very thick Russian accent. She's Russian. Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow doesn't have that accent. No, but her whole family does. Yet her whole family <laughs> does. I, I'm okay with it because of her super spy nature. Like, it doesn't bother me because mm. spies at that level are trained to lose all sense of origin when they yeah. present themselves to somebody else. So I don't really care about that. But her sister's a spy. Trained but but spy. her sister's a spy in Russia. Like, they're in Russia. That's yeah. where they are. So I don't really care. But- yeah. And they got Florence Pugh yeah. uh, to for that character, and she is a stellar actress. She yeah. is phenomenal. So I, I have high hopes for this movie. I have I mean, high I hopes. I have high hopes. I'd love to see the character because I think the Black Widow is a character they just really did not develop during the entire Avengers series. They didn't mm. give her, yeah, they didn't give her enough screen time. And it actually, didn't. I don't know if you recall this, but I recall as the Avengers, like after the Avengers movie, the first Avengers movie, when the, when the hype started to really start to explode, yeah. um, there was talk of her and Hawkeye having, at, at, I think at first they proposed their own films, but then it became like, oh, it was a United film and that got scrapped and they were, and then they were talking about maybe doing a Black Widow film. And then this malarkey, and I think this, I think this might be part urban legend to be honest with you, but the story goes, that the executives at Marvel Studios were like, well, no one wants to see an, uh, a female-focused superhero movie, which, by the way, sounds absolutely stupid if the, if the female hero you're talking about is Scarlett Johansson. But that aside, that aside, 
um yeah they they nicked it they totally they, they just they they scuttled it and, and then, then wonder woman happened <laughs> and then yeah and then everyone got mad about it wonder woman happened and then what does marvel do they make captain marvel and i gotta be honest with you i had problems with that movie not because she's a female but because the way the story was told i was like meh but mm-hmm. uh but it also had a lot of 90s nostalgia which i liked but this this black widow movie i think is i think this black widow movie is going to be pretty excellent i think it's going to be pretty good i, I mean it's got to be as far as captain marvel i think they they miscasted the lead the story wasn't as entertaining as it could have been. I agree. And I, I loved I know, her in Scott Pilgrim versus the world, but that was a different and movie. I know entirely. a lot of people uh, really loved the, you know, when she gets her power and the, the fight song, I just think that was a bad placement of a song. Just a girl did not fit in my opinion as a fight song. That's fair. That's fair. Um, hmm. There was a lot they did with that that just it, it felt it felt pandering. But that's another story, and we're doing and a, a little, lightning round night and a little chaotic, perhaps like Loki. Oh, Loki. So, oh hey, oh, oh. funny, you should bring that up. So Loki, this TV series, I'm excited. Mm. Um, mm. I don't. It it looks like he's trapped on some sort of planet that does TV shows or something. I don't know. We don't so know. What Earth. It is. So well, okay. So I don't want to get too far into spoilers. There have been a couple of things that have come out and that I've seen on marketing materials. And especially when I was at Disney World, there were a couple of Loki things starting to hit the shelves. Okay. And there were some insignia that gives away some potential storyline, which was upsetting, but whatever. Um, I think that Loki might take people by surprise. I I hope so, because... Tom Hiddleston is a, an amazing actor. Oh my gosh, he's, he's so good. Has, he's created this character in such a way that Loki is interesting. You know, uh, watching the cartoons, I, I hated Loki. Of course. In the cartoons, because he was just this weird pompous a-hole that there's nothing I could connect with. Mm-hmm. But this version of Loki, he he's not this pompous a-hole. There's a reason behind the way he behaves, you know? He he was always kind of the the overlooked brother, and then he finally finds out he's not really the brother, and these other things. And you know, he's he, there, there's a lot more to this character than you, you see in the cartoons. Yeah, and not only that, he, he he tries, he does try to be better and do better, but you know, unfortunately, we lose that Loki, and this is a younger Loki before all those other things happen. And I want to see the chaos and mischief. And I think we're going to see it. Yeah, the way that the way that Tom Hiddleston plays his character, uh, Loki, he has crafted a. He's been the villain. He's been the comic relief. Mm-hmm. He's been an anti-hero. He's been the prodigal son. Like he has, and and he's been the redeemed brother. Yeah, right. Like he has mm-hmm. hit every freaking point, and and it and none of it ever feels like oh great now we're like contorting this character. No, no, no. He is a multifaceted character, and they focus on one or two facets at a time, and then we end up with the whole gem that is Tom Hiddleston's Loki. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't want to spend too much more time on Marvel stuff, even though there are other announcements that we didn't get to in franchise oh God, so stuff many. that's coming out, but. I do want to ask one question before I move on. Yes. On a scale of one to five, one being absolutely no more, let's be done. Five being I want all the Marvel in the world and three being this is the right pace for me. Where are you guys at? I'm like a four. That's not a, a little fair. more, but not too bad. It's not a fair question. Um, <laughs> like, well, because three was we're on pace. Three and I was we're on the right pace. And, well, and, and, and the pace... Is, I'm not a Marvel fan, so... I, I, I'm not getting enough uh, Spider-Man, so really I could care less. <laughs> um, but I am excited for the Venom Carnage movie. Oh, I'm really excited for that. And that that's mm-hmm. part of the Spider-Man stuff. So, uh, and that's coming out this year. So, mm-hmm. Venom I'm, was a movie that I felt did not get the the support and the love that it deserved. Um, it came out at a very strange time in mm-hmm. cinema. But I'm super glad that it somehow survived 
the rocky road that it that it traveled and now we get freaking woody harrelson as carnage oh my gosh i know and i'm um, so it's gonna be i'm really excited for the new venom film i think it's gonna be great yeah. no i'm Thank excited for it um and, and technically that's a sony project so it's not really a marvel one mm-hmm. I, I don't know um and i had a really interesting discussion about this is it's really interesting where they're gonna go they've kind of already until they bring x-men into the universe and um i know fantastic four is slated for that um they've really kind of already used all their top name characters so where do they go from here because now they're just kind of digging from the ditch in my opinion that, that was what people thought about guardians and yet Guardians has turned into a killer franchise. Yeah, but Disney. Guardians was still a lot higher. Uh, uh, it was still a fairly well popular comic series. You know, The Eternals. Not a lot of people know those these characters. Um, uh, what mm-hmm. is the other one that I can't remember its name, but Yondu was part of them. At S- Sylvester Stallone was... Oh, I forget the name of it, but I know mm-hmm. Trekkers mm-hmm. or Reapers. I can't remember. Reapers. That's gonna be, yeah, that's going to be a movie. I, I really feel like, you know, and Marvel does have a vast, diverse amount of different comic series and characters. Mm-hmm. But I really feel like they've already used the top tier. And hey, it, at least can they then. swing it and, and, and still hit? I, I think so, but it's going to take some effort. My fear, though, is everyone's kind of done because they've done this big thing and they're not going to want to go through that rinse and repeat pattern. They see all these movies and then everything bundles into this little ball and boom, you know, and then 10, 12 years later, you know, we've wrapped that up and we're going to the next phase. So that leads on to the next major question, which is, how do you think Date Man is going to do? Wait, Calendar what? Man or whatever. Well, calendar his name Man. Is. Oh, you, you mean the long Halloween with Batman? Uh, so. That was interesting. You know, when we talked with John last week. Um, you mean writer, director, and creative John Soros, who was our guest last week? Yes. Wow. And I even found a really good, po- cool poster to put on our little ad that has Krebs' face on it. <laughs> yes, I love that poster. I mean, not because it has my face on it, but because well, Bridget then Connell did a great job on it. Yeah. When we were talking to him, he was actually on this project, and it, it's been done for quite a while. Um, so I'm excited to have that come out. Uh, it is coming out in two parts, but the really odd thing is because it was delayed so much, we get part one in June, then part two in July. Uh, so we're not gonna have to wait too long, but it is a great Batman story, uh, early on in Batman's career. And it deals with the Falcons, the Waynes and, uh, and, and the Gordons. Um, those are kind of the families it, it circulates around. So we're going to see a really y- y- probably young Jim Gordon that's going through uh, marital problems. Mm. Uh, we're going to see probably some flashbacks of a younger Bruce Wayne and then an older Bruce Wayne as Batman um, trying to find Calendar Man. And it, it, it's got a great cast. Uh, Troy mm. Baker is playing Joker. Oh, I love uh, Troy Baker so much. Yeah. Um, and some other great ones, and I don't have it pulled up now. Which, and for the record, Troy Baker, there are videos on YouTube of this. You can go find them. Troy Baker does justice to the Joker established by Mark Hamill. Oh yeah, he does. Um, he does an amazing job with that. He did the voice of uh, the Joker in Arkham Knight. No, not Arkham Knight. Something else. Um, I want to say he did. Did he, did he do the voice for Killing Joke, or was that Mark? No, Mark yeah, Hamill was, did Killing Joke. Mark. Yeah. Um, uh, was it Red Hood? He did. He did one of the more recent movies as the Joker, and honestly, you can barely tell. Well, their performances there, there's apart. a reading he did at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, down spot on. Yeah, um, it's it's amazing. Uh, I'm pulling up the cast now. Uh, and what are the platforms that this is going to be coming out on again? Will it be hitting theaters proper, or is it no. only on HBO? I, Max I think it's or? only on HBO Max at this point. No, the 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 last Halloween's coming straight to DVD. It's like every other DC animated. Well, it'll be it'll be on HBO Max though, as I, well probably, as straight yeah. to disc. So uh, yeah. Jason Eccles, uh, which did the voice of the Red Hood, uh, will be Batman. Uh, nice. Naya Riviera is Selena Kyle or Catwoman. Josh Duhamel is Harvey Dent or two. I love him so much. Um, Titus Well Welliver. Oh, Titus Welliver is uh, Carmine Falcone. 
Oh, he's a great voice for that. Uh, if you if you want to know who Titus Welliver is, you should either watch the show Bosch on Prime, or if you go back to the show Lost, he was the evil immortal brother that showed up like in seasons four and five. Yeah. So again, great cast. Um, and it's a great story. So I'm really excited that they've decided to do this. And I even more so, I'm glad that they split it into two parts. It's definitely it would be too hard to cram it into a, a quick two hour film. So I, I think a good four hours is, is fair enough. Um, mm-hmm. And DC animation, always very solid. They always do a great job. Yeah, where, where Marvel shines with live action, DC has, has definitely taken the spotlight with animated films. Yeah, and, and Marvel's animated stuff is okay. It's just- Yeah, it, it really is like a juxtaposition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are in our last 10 minutes here, but minutes. there's a little bit of video game news coming from Mr. Krebs. Yes, because my uh, fellow co-hosts here humor me every once in a minute and they let me talk about certain things that, that I also love. Uh, so there are some, there, there's like a ton of major video game news right now. It would, it, there's a ton of nerd news everywhere because we're sort of coming out of this like COVID hibernation and all these creative items that got stalled or postponed are now coming back to life. I'm looking especially forward to Horizon Forbidden West. In fact, we are recording this on a Tuesday night and they're going to have a state of play on Thursday where they show some gameplay. I will absolutely be watching that. By the time you hear this, it will have already been done. So please check out Horizon Forbidden West and their state of play on YouTube. You can usually catch those after the fact. Uh, pretty easily and pretty readily. Battlefield 6 had some massive leaks with not just screenshots, but also some gameplay footage, at least some alpha footage, as well as uh, I think a trailer also got leaked. There, there was basically a press packet that got disseminated before it should have. Uh, and I always look at stuff like this, like, oh yeah, let me get my air quotes so I can say the word leak, right? But when it comes to viral uh advertising, having a leak is kind of the way to go. But that said, we got an early glimpse at Battlefield 6. And I am not a huge Battlefield fan. I, I do love video games in general. I think, you know, war games are fun. But um, this this one has some real potential. I'm excited to see where they take this series. But the one that really sticks out for me, and it's not even as th- this last one, the one that I saved for last, is not even as big a title as the other two. And I totally get that. But If you've ever heard me talk about video games on the show before, which doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I sometimes bring up The Division because Tom Clancy's The Division is one of my favorite worlds. It's one of my favorite IPs because I I love the story. I think that it is insanely apropos given our current battle with COVID. And this happened, of course, The Division 1 came out well before COVID did. But there were also just certain things about the game that were just so super freaking enjoyable. And one of my favorite things from the first division game was a game mode called survival in survival. The idea is that you're going into an incredibly uh, contagious hazardous area. You're in a hazmat suit, but your helo goes down because there's this Mm. snowstorm. And when you crash, you are injured and your hazmat suit is also damaged. So now you're exposed to the contagion in the air. The way that survival works is you have nothing but a pistol. There is a raging snowstorm outside. There is contagion in the air and you must move as fast as possible to craft warm clothing, to stay alive, to get a filter so that you can breathe the air and to escape before other people or the environment kills you. It is one of the (laughs) most fun. uh, It's one of the most enervating, uh, exciting game modes in any game I've ever played. And the reason I bring that up is because the Division Heartland was announced. The Division Heartland will be a completely free-to-play game. Expect microtransactions. Uh, It will be completely free-to-play. I don't know if it will be cross-play enabled. I don't know if it will be like cross-platform play, but it will be released on all the major platforms, including uh, previous gen and current gen and PC. And from what we've seen so far, it sounds like a more uh, like like a renewed take on the survival gameplay and i cannot wait to play this i've been super excited for this in addition to that they're also dropping a novel and they're adding another world patch to division two so as a division fan i am super happy with the news that came out of ubisoft in the last week or so 
Excellent. The only other video game in particular that I wanted to make sure to bring up is uh, Halo Infinite has been getting an increasing amount of dump on the internet, hearing more things and seeing more gameplay. And we're starting to hear the rumblings of major things to come. I'm personally very excited for that. As you were talking about the division, it reminded me of Absolutely. infection back in the day in Halo Reach. And I just got all warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, yeah. And this weekend, as you listen to this, if you're listening to this on the day that this drops, this weekend, I just found out today that Call of uh, Black Ops Cold War will be having a free-to-play weekend for both its um, multiplayer competitive mode as well as its uh, infected mode, like the zombie mode. So mm -hmm. there will be a free-to-play this weekend going through Memorial Day. So have at it, kiddos. Excellent. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I Video games are starting to get annoying to me, and it's because of you get these microtransaction stuff. Yeah. Um, you know battlefront 2 star wars battlefront 2 is just horrid it is horrid you're right you know you, mm -hmm. first it comes out where you, you spend money to get these these crates and then they get rid of the crates and then you can earn points to get these skins but you can't earn points offline you can only earn points if you play online and you can't you can only get rewards as such as upgrades on weapons and special weapons if you play online you can't earn those offline um it just i i missed the day when you got a game and the entire game was there yeah i get but, that but you didn't have to play online you didn't have to do all these gizmos you know i, I i'm still i'm still unhappy with final fantasy 7 you should be that, that i got part one and now part two is on my play on a PlayStation five and they're not going to put it on a PlayStation four. So I have to get another system to play th that, which is just ridiculous. Um, but where's your sense of pride and accomplishment, Dan? Hmm, my sense of pride and accomplishment would be maybe <laughs> quit playing video games and go find something else to do. Uh, <laughs> but on that note, build lightsabers. There yeah. is some good news. What came out of the star Wars world Oh yes! Uh, this last week, our uh, uh, the the you know one of the few people in, invited open invitation. You just let me know when you want to drop in. Uh, you know, I'm I'm sure he's listening now. Our our good friend, Mr. Filoni, Mr. Dave Filoni, finally come on the show. I don't care. Officially got his <laughs> day in the sun. Uh, even though he was quietly promoted at uh, Lucasfilm last year, he has officially been updated on the website. It's been paraded around the internet. If you have not yet heard, if you're wondering why Star Wars over the last year has taken some better directions, I have a strong feeling that there's been some major contribution on his part. Absolutely. Um, congratulations to you, Mr. Filoni. We are so very, very happy for you. But yes, some other cool things and that I wanted... thank you. Thank you for being promoted. Yes. Um, and some of the other cool things that I wanted to make sure to talk about, I was at Disney World for two weeks. I, I wasn't there on May the 4th, but on May the 4th, they did do a limited edition Luke and Leia lightsaber in a custom box that opened up and played music. And a whole thing, if I could have had one, I absolutely would. And there may be some egregious amount of money being spent sometime in the future. <laughs> but not everything that was supposed to be in Walt Disney World on May the 4th arrived on May the 4th. And Disney didn't make a big deal about the stuff that didn't arrive. We just kind of found out when we walked into Batuu and there was stuff there. Um, among other things, a whole bunch of updated Black Spire Outpost merch that's really, really cool. I got a number of pieces of it that I really love. Um, a whole bunch of, of new toys and experiences. But the other big one the was big one. the Darksaber that dun, dun, dun. Disney did not tell anybody was coming out. No. And then I happened to have my phone off for my vacation. But my last day in the parks was at Hollywood Studios. And when I woke up in the evening after taking a nap and was getting ready to pack i decided to turn on my phone saw all of the news about how the dark saber had launched the day before and it was going to be gone my wife bless her heart got a uh, got a lift we ran into the park as quickly as we could and we got one of the last ones in hollywood studios it is 
really cool. Uh, not a perfect blade. Don't, you know, it, 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 it's probably more sentimental uh, and nerdy than actually a legitimate, I'm going to take it out and hit people with it blade by any means, but it's still cool. It sounds it is right. Super it cool. feels right. It looks pretty good. It's, um, it's beautiful to look at. It is. It is. And so, uh, yeah, we'll make sure to get some of that out. But we are almost out of time here. The only other thing that I did want to make sure to mention about some news and things that we want to make sure that you are aware of is in September, we will be at Fanex in Salt Lake. Yes! We are running a whole bunch of panels. We're going to try to meet with as many people as we can, grab interviews. We want audience participation. So please, 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 please join us there. As we get more details and get closer, we will let you know if we are able to find a source for good tickets and things like that. We'll let you know as well. I hear there are some things in the works. Oh, yes. I am, I am so thrilled that Fanex is going to be a real Fanex this year and not, you know, a faked convention as we have seen in the last 18 months. Um, I, I am so, so thrilled and excited for this. Please, folks, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Get your shots. Do what you got to do because we want to see you. Absolutely. I think those are all of our major points. Dan, it's up to you now, man. Do we have other points? Do we have other points? I don't know. Uh, there, I'm sure there will always be other points. Um, so, simply, I'm just going to say with that said, we're out of here. And Dungeon Crawlers, even if the news had to hit you a mile a minute and we were done in 45, tell your story, whatever may come. And just like every single one of our news stories tonight, please remember to be epic and don't suck. Remember, the force will be with you always.